Look, I've covered truancy for five years on the show. I've covered a lot of truancy. But there was a clip from the doctors which really brought the question out on me. If we make a mother, if you make, if we make parents a jailbird, what's that teaching the child? All that's teachers is teaching the child is, oh, I can skip school and get mom and dad in jail. That is not. It's not what it is. So I'm gonna play you. I'm gonna play you a clip from the doctors. Which makes me change my mind. So, this is from five years ago. So, let's take a look. And a bit later in the show, we're going to we're gonna do we're gonna give you the very latest on the uh, on the. Uh, the lady who threw that soup at a manager's face, she's arrested. We'll give you the very latest in just a few minutes. But, take a look at this clip. Kids ditching school, it's nothing new. But now parents are being called out and getting locked up. It's already happening in Indiana, where three parents were slapped with felony charges after their kids skipped school. If prosecuted, the parents, not their children, could face the consequences up to 30 months in jail. With more and more states targeting parents with absentee kids, could you be next? Well, should parents be held responsible if their child plays hooky? We asked family and child development expert Dr. Gail Gross to join in on the discussion. Should parents ever be responsible if, if their child plays hooky? Well, you know, there's a difference yeah. between being responsible and putting somebody in jail and making truancy criminal. When a child commits truancy, you know that something else is going on. It's a symptom of something else going on. So the you know, majority of people, kids that commit truancy, are being bullied at school, and they are staying away from school because they're being bullied. So, you know, parents are important to children. If we make your mother a jailbird, what is that saying to the child? So a lot of potential problems with this, clearly. Tremendous. Now, and also there's the other angle, which is a dysfunctional family and all of a sudden, the child's, ooh, I can skip school and get mom and dad in jail? You know, there, there's just a lot of potential issues here. Good point. Well, think about that. Yeah, you know, and, and, you know and there would be situations where that would occur. I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I just got an email from my son's school. Yes, it's true that he has to serve a detention because, and I said, what is this? He's a senior in high school, and he said, Oh, Mom, I was 10 minutes late for school, and I didn't sign in late. So they send an email. They're putting kids in detention for being 10 minutes late. Right? I should have done Hands that. Hands behind your back. Take me off. Take me off. We're taking you off. We'll see how a month in jail. That's right. <laughs> for being late. It's just one more example of the system hindering people more than helping. Yes. And, and why... Why do we not put the onus on the school, the educators, give them the resources that they need? Well, I think it has to be shared, right? And I, exactly. And I personally, I mean, everyone has There's an opinion programs on this. Everyone's there. entitled to their opinion, they, they especially as a parent, like because that's kind of the sacred the territory, right? Bring you know, I think that we should cut every parent some slack to have their opinion about how they want to raise their child. But I really believe that... Time is basically shared 50-50. 50% of the child or teenager's daytime hours are spent in school. 50% are spent under the family auspices. And so I yield to the educators as experts to do their part. And then I don't want them stepping into my lane to tell me how to do my part. So I think it's really a two-way But you're thing. also in a situation where, admittedly, your kids go to school, you've instilled that in them. I'm thinking more of... You know, when kids are truant for, when they skip class for five, six, seven times a year, they're often coming from families where the parents are struggling. They don't maybe even have the tools and resources they need to properly parent, meaning no one, they're not sure how to deal with it. So 
throwing them in jail, that's not helping. Not there's no, no way if There's no break, way that's going to solve the problem. If you break up families, all, you, all you're doing is complicating the problem. It's a system gone amok. And at the end of the day, we can find other ways to discipline children. You know as a mom, and you soon will be a mom, you'll note that all you have to do is find the button and push it. Take away their driver's license. Take away their, yeah. their cell phone. Exactly. There are other the, ways the to discipline handle. a child that will make a difference. And I do think we can all agree that it's counterproductive to arrest parents, using right. resources, social workers, educators coming together, figuring out what's the problem, how can we solve it, uh, putting mom and dad in jail, probably not the answer. We'll be right back. Agreed. Like, if we make mom in jail, what's that teaching him? Well, moms.com has the pros and cons. You get to spend extra time with your kid, that's the pro. Number nine, you might miss out on important lessons, that's the con. Number eight, it's a pro. Might be for a worthwhile experience. Number seven, they might not appreciate it. That's a con. Depends on the child's relationship with them and forms of school. Plenty of good ones can mean they might think make it make a habit of it. But yeah, we gotta break the habit. It teaches them responsibility. Which is a pro. They might not want it for the right reasons. It's a pro. I mean it's a con. Promotes balance. Pro. The teacher might look down on you. Con. It can help with social development. Pro. And lastly, absence is going to work. That's a con. So, the question is, do we have to do we have to put mom and dad in jail to send them a message? No. We need to rely on the, on every school and the educators and say, hey, we need the resources. We need to do this. You can't tell me how to parent mine. You can't tell me how I should raise my child. I'm a town of my own opinion. But the law states you have to send your kid to school. If you don't, then this is what can happen. It goes on the record, and then if you don't, if you don't do this, then you get to go to court. We're going to do this in just in parts of two weeks. We're going to report from a home. I'm going to report from outside the home game where I'm going to talk with a sit with a. I'm going to talk with an old teacher of mine who is now the assistant principal. Give her facts about what it means. We'll have that for you in a couple weeks. We're going to update you, on, so we're still we'll stick to the story. And in two weeks, we're going to give you an updated version on this from. Live from the stadium. All right, let's take a break here. Later in this broadcast, bike theft. What can you do? What can you do if your bike's been stolen? We'll tell you. We'll be coming back. But first, next, the latest on that woman who was arrested, who threw a soup at the manager. Trust me, I wouldn't want to be in this person's shoes. We'll be right back. Before we move any further, let's give you some up to date. Let's get you up to date here. Now, weeks ago, I told you about this woman who threw a soup at a manager. We heard from the manager saying, get refunds, get someone else, blah, 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 she gets in the mood, and then this happened, that happened. So, here's an update now on what's been happening since it's on since, since, this, since that incident. And let me tell you something, as a, fast, as a person who works at a fast food place, I wouldn't even dare to do that. Even if I did, I'd be arrested. Take a look. Throw food in someone's face and you may be arrested. That's a lesson Amanda Nicole Martinez has just learned. On November 7th, Martinez complained to a restaurant in Temple, Texas that her menudo soup was so hot it melted the top of the takeout container. Janelle Nellie Broland was the manager on duty who took the call. I, of course, offered her like refunds and was trying to get her either a replacement meal or just something completely different if she wasn't in the mood for soup anymore and she just continued to yell. Martinez came back to the restaurant to continue her complaint as seen on this surveillance video pointing out the melted lid. She just still continued to yell, make a scene, um, and still, still cursing with you know families and other children in the restaurant and that's when I said you know ma'am you either need to calm down or leave 
and or I'm going to be calling the police. I said, ma'am, I can still help you, get you something. I just ask that you don't yell and cuss at me. And that's the moment she threw it at me. Thankfully, the hot soup had cooled down, but Brolin says the experience was still painful. My eyes were stinging so bad. They were burning and the spices were all like inside of the top part of my nose and it caused me to have a nosebleed. 31-year-old Amanda Martinez was arrested Wednesday, charged with a Class A misdemeanor, assault causing bodily injury, according to Bell County Sheriff's Department. Her bail was set at $5,000. If convicted, Martinez faces up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $4,000. This is Inside Edition Digital. That's the update of what happened. And in my opinion, if I threw a soup at someone she wanted to press charges, I'd sit in jail and think, I'd sit in jail for a year and think about it. So what really needs to happen here is that if you're going to, if you're going to complain about something, you do it nicely. You don't go into a blown out tantrum like you're a freaking five year old. That could be something you don't have to live with the rest of your life. On a bike theft now, as you know, it happens every second. Bike theft has happened in everywhere, so... Inside Edition, my mom's favorite. And there are one... Two, three, four. Four of these, and we're going to try to go through all of them as fast as we can throughout this half hour. But we're going to, go, we're going to start with the very latest. Two days ago, Inside Edition did an investigation on electric bikes. As you know, if you were, if you've seen people driving electric bikes, you've probably seen them doing deliveries, but it can be stolen in 10 minutes after being locked up. So, what can you do? Take a look. Making his call. Actually, we'll show you next. If you've been going around checking out every city, you may have seen those e bikes going around. E bikes are those electric bikes, engines, something like that, but every 10 minutes it can be stolen. But what can you do? Here's the Inside Edition Chief Investigative Correspondent, Lisa Guerrero. And before I start this, I want to have, I want to say one day, I want to have her on my show. Just one day. Guest anchor. Yeah, one day. Here's Lisa Grau. Pricey electric bikes are everywhere now. But they've also become a hot target for thieves. Sparks fly as this crook uses a buzz saw to cut the chain of an expensive e-bike. Watch as this thief steals an e-bike right as this food delivery man is coming down the steps. He gives chase but can't catch up. As bike thefts jump, delivery workers band together for safety, reads a recent New York Times headline. Delivery workers are targeted uh, now more than ever because they're using some of the most expensive bikes um, in order to do this work. The NYPD says e-bike thefts have doubled since last year. To see how bad the problem is, we rented this sleek $2,000 electric bike from NYC Adventure e-bike tours. To turn the tables on the bike thieves, we're going to hide not just one, but two GPS devices in this brand new e-bike. Here comes Lisa riding up on the e-bike. And then I lock the bike up to this stop sign post. Time to see if any bike thieves come on by. How long did we have to wait? Just 10 minutes. Watch as this guy strolls up, he sizes up the bike, then bam! He rips it right off. 
Then he hops on and speeds off. There he goes. Time to track him down. He can move so much easier on the bike than we can in us Manhattan traffic. Our GPS trackers led us on this circuitous route. Go straight, two lights, and then make a right. Coming up on the park. Eight blocks later, we find ourselves at Tompkins Square Park. Time to head out on foot. So we're in pursuit, looking for the bike thief. We scoured the park, but there was no sign of him or our bike anywhere. Suddenly... It's under the tarp. Is there a bike under here? And sure enough, there it is. This is my bike. I don't feel took my bike. But everyone here says they don't have a clue how the bike got there. Somebody took the bike and put it under the tarp. I don't know, and if I knew, I wouldn't say nothing. Sounds pretty, pretty fishy. We got our bike back, but the guy who stole it is long gone. We caught him on camera, but we might never see that man again. As for the tens of thousands of delivery workers in New York City, they say they just want to get home safely every night. These e-bikes are delivery workers' livelihood, um, and they relied on these bikes in order to provide a, um, a better life to their families. Just last month in New York City, a delivery worker was stabbed to death by a suspected e-bike thief. So what can you do if your e-bike is being stolen? How can you securely lock it up? Well, JuiceBikes.com has some answers. Like, it's all about location, location, and location. It's those things are unbreakable lock. Bolt carters or portable angle grinder will make a quick work with expensive bikes. Common sense. Leave your bike in a safe, well-populated area. Use a bike rack if no one's around. Never hide or cover your bike. Locking in anyone from public view will give the thief plenty of time to work on your locks. Whenever possible, bring your e-bike inside with you to ultimate theft protection. E-bike insurance family. What about insurance? Well, e-bike insurance is a family concept. A very good idea, but consider your e-bike with something else insurance. But we are going to get another... Well, I'm going to do two. So this, here's one from six years ago on these bikes. Here's a Dr. Rick. Because these people steal one of these bikes and nobody gets the message. We're also going to tell you how you can protect your bikes from being stolen. Here's Lisa Guerrero. More Americans are taking. So, once again, here's Lisa Guerrero. More and more Americans are taking to the streets on bicycles. And nowhere is that more apparent than in Portland, Oregon, often called Bike Town, USA. But with all those bikes comes a major problem, bike thieves. I personally think that bike theft is an epidemic. Scott Baker is a service manager at Bike Gallery, a popular bike shop. Every single day I'm at work, I see something come through the door that's been stolen. It's gotten so bad, the store has posted these police photos, a gallery of suspected bike thieves for employees to be on the lookout for. So how common is bike thievery? Like bike Gallery loaned us this expensive mountain bike worth $2,000. Next, we hired security expert Jason Ciacatini from baitbike.com. He's skilled at planting radio tracking devices in bikes in places you'd never expect. Downtown Portland was the perfect location for our bait bike. The high-end bike sure did get a lot of attention. Keep your eyes on this dude. What's that he's holding close to his body? It's a bolt cutter. But he may be the world's most incompetent bicycle thief. He can't get through the lock and wanders off in frustration. Not too long after that came the guy in the hoodie. Hmm, he sure looks like he's checking things out. He thinks the coast is clear. He casually approaches the bike, and just like that, he clips the bike lock, and in a matter of moments, he's pedaling away. He's got a backpack and a hoodie on. It happens so quickly. Let's see that again. Those are wire cutters. Little does he know, the radio tracking device is monitoring his every move. He's currently right here. The chase is on through the streets of downtown Portland. It's time to let the cops know what's going on. Somebody just stole our bike. 
The thief goes over the steel bridge and we're right behind on the other side of the Willamette River. That's where we get out to follow the signal on foot. Well, the GPS says it's about a quarter mile that way. He may have sold it to somebody who's under the bridge right now taking it apart. That's entirely likely. As we get closer, the signal gets stronger. So my estimation is that the bike is about 200 yards ahead of us. We have to hop over a fence and find ourselves under Highway 5. Not a pleasant place to be. Then, pay dirt. It's a homeless camp. Bicycle parts are strewn all over. It looks like a chop shop. What appears to be a lot of stolen bikes here. Luckily, the police get there just in time. There's our bike. There it is. As you can see, they've already started to take it apart. Wow, that didn't take long. Where did you get that bike? Not my bike. No sign of the guy who stole the bike. I guess he sold it minutes earlier and took off. Where did you get that bike? I didn't get that bike. It's not my bike. I know, it's my bike. Look what the cops find on him. Oh, where'd you get that one? Smartphones and electronics. Here's a brand new camera. Check out all the bike tools. Why do you need so many tools? He's busted, and you won't believe who he is. Remember the photos posted at the bike shop? Look at the guy on the left. That's him. He's actually known as the kingpin of thieves. Is he kind of a kingpin of bike theft here in Portland? Yeah, he is. He is? Absolutely. His name is Leroy Parsons, and he has an incredibly long rap sheet. Look at all these mug shots, one after another. Over 70 of them in total for a variety of charges, including bike theft, burglary, and drugs. The police bike task force have been trying to put Parsons behind bars for a long time. Are you glad he caught him today? Very glad. Yes. There's our bike. Cops have charged Parsons with theft by receiving stolen property. That is a felony. He has pled not guilty. So what can you do if your bike... What can you do if your bike theft? When we return, I'll tell you. A few minutes ago, I showed you some, I showed you a couple clips on bike theft, from e-bikes to two thousand dollar mountain bikes. So, what can you do to prevent this? Well, first up, you need to double up your security by using two high quality locks. U locks tend to make more durable than thin cable locks, which can be cut through more easily. So, I would suggest try to invest in U locks. Number two, keep use your locks and keep your wheels from being stolen too. If you choose double security by using both e-lock and a steel chain, you need to thread the e-lock through the bike frame, the bike rack, or the other secure structure in one wheel, then loop the cable lock through the both front and back wheel. Swap a quick release seat and wheel screws for the ones that require keys. Number four, make your bike new you unique. But stolen is hard and easy to sell. If you want a pair of GPS tracking device, we'll put it where you won't find it. Try out a smart lock. It's controlled by your smartphone. It can alert when your bike is in motion and even allow you to track the bike's location. There's also locks around alarms that make emergency gases, smelly gases, tamper and stop these are the tracks. And always bring your bike inside at night. If you return your bike and find the one that its tires have been punctured, do not leave it unattached. And take note of your bike's still number. You need to write it down and put it in a place where you have to remember. It could be in your wallet, it could be in a dresser drawer, but don't leave it in one of your shirts. Put it in a secure place, locked up, in a safe, in the vault, in a dresser drawer, anywhere. But what, can you, but what else can you do? But in the near future, if we're going to try out an experiment to where I steal a bike and they go track it down. That's for future references. Speaking of that, that's all the position to cut me break Thursday going to Friday. We'll see you again tomorrow for cut me break Friday afternoon. Have a good night, everyone. Make sure you turn on your post notifications so you don't miss an episode of cut me break. And for more tips and information, you can log on to jcarvey69.com slash cut me a break. Give me, me, slash give me a break. Sorry, I need to change the website. Good night.